In this tutorial, we'll be taking a deep dive into layers and masking in Capture One version 12. Hi there, Michael here from Vibrant Shot. You can find me via the social media links below and also at VibrantShot.com. So in this tutorial, we're going to be sort of celebrating the release of Capture 112 by covering one of the most interesting features, I think, in this particular version, and that is uh, Luma range based selection. So they've kind of taken layers and masking to yet another level in this particular version here. In version 11, they really kind of brought layers to the forefront, uh, gave us really interesting tools like the Refine Edge tool. So uh, I haven't really covered layers and masking in a great amount of detail yet. So this video is going to be somewhat all encompassing where I'll cover some of the tools that existed in version 11 and we'll also cover the luma range tools in combination with that so we're going to start on this particular image here where we're going to look at more of the standard tools but also touch on luma range and then we'll move on to two other examples after that so in this particular image what i want to do is essentially just kind of balance out the image a little bit more in many ways so i want to highlight uh, the background a little bit i want to make it a bit lighter and i want to balance the exposure on the face with the rest of the body and maybe just add a little bit of dimension to the highlights so to go ahead and do that, we're going to jump into the version that isn't adjusted. This is sort of the final product, which is, you know, this is what I want to achieve ultimately. So this is our starting point here. And so to kind of balance things out, um, we're going to start off, I think, on the background, actually. So let's go ahead and create a layer here. We're going to call this subject. So this will be our subject extraction. And I may or may not actually let's get rid of caps lock here. Uh, I may or may not need the subject layer, but I always find it's actually easier to select the subject than it is to select the background. And um, then we can use some of the tools that are built in to kind of create an inverse selection of our subject to create our background selection. So let's go ahead and pick a brush here. If we right click, we can adjust the size, hardness, opacity and flow. Generally, when I'm doing an extraction, I want my opacity and flow at 100%, my hardness at zero, and the size doesn't need to be too big because we're gonna actually fill in uh, the selection on the inside. So it doesn't really matter. It's better to use a small brush for this than a large one. So we're just gonna go ahead and start brushing here. Now, if we don't see the brush, you just have to hit the M key and then it will show up. So just make sure that you have that enabled. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to see what you're drawing and where you're drawing it. Another way you can actually see the um, uh, selection is to hit Option M or Alt M, and then that's going to give you this grayscale version where anything that is black is not selected and anything that is white is selected. So we're not going to use that here because it's not terribly helpful to us, um, but I'll show you scenarios where that is helpful later in the video. So let's just go ahead and go back hit our M key and I'm actually going to delete that because I didn't really know where I was painting. So now that we have the mask enabled, we're going to go around the outside of the subject. And I generally find that it's best to go slightly outside the subject as opposed to being too far inside the subject. So um, it's always good to just paint a little bit extra there. Not too much, obviously, because then the refining tools won't really work right either. But you do need to go a little bit beyond just to make sure that you encapsulate everything. Now, notice that I am painting at the bottom here. The reason for that is I need to make uh, sort of an enclosed selection in order to use this tool here, which is the fill mask. And as soon as I select that from this little drop down here where you have three dots, and these are essentially all of the tools that you'll have available to you for masking. So just become familiar with that particular drop down. And as I did fill mask, you can see that it filled in everything uh, that was inside my selected area. And that's perfect. That's what we want. So the next thing we need to do is refine the selection. And once again, we're going to use the refine mask tool that existed in Capture One 11. So this is not a new feature for 12. This was in Capture One 11 as well. But if you haven't seen that version then this is going to be new to you as well so we're going to select refine mask it does take a minute to kind of start up and do note that i'm on about a five-year-old macbook pro now because until this point mac um macbook pros haven't really been worth upgrading to so i do have a new one coming in about a week or so which is going to be great for our next video so that's how long it takes on a 50 megapixel file using a five-year-old macbook pro in your case obviously if you're using a newer machine it will take a lot less time so now that it's done its uh, initial sort of pass through, we can actually adjust this pretty quickly. So as I make adjustments to the radius value, uh, it's not gonna take long to give us a new preview. It's just that initial boot up of this refined mask tool that takes a minute. So generally I find that uh, I'm gonna be somewhere around like the 170 to 200 range for a subject like this. It does depend on you know the scale of your subject within the frame and things of that nature. So your numbers may vary. Uh, also keep in mind that this scale is completely non-linear, like over here is two. 
and then over at the end is 300 so this last little bit here really kind of climbs up so i think around 170 or so is going to be a good number for us i'm going to click apply there and now what we can do to confirm that this selection is okay we can actually um, hold down option and m and see how we're looking and overall i think we're pretty good i could maybe remove some of this here so we can use our eraser with a nice large soft brush and just kind of whoop, no actually sorry not the eraser we want to use the brush not the eraser because we're actually painting the white section so we're going to hit the b key to bring up the brush and we're just going to kind of paint this in a little bit here and just kind of making sure that um oh that's not what i want let's uh redo refine mask here this always becomes tricky because I want to make sure that this is soft, but also not introduce too much of the background. Now, keep in mind that we don't have to have a perfect selection here uh, for what we're actually intending. So this is good enough. I just wanted to brush a little bit out of the body here. And you can see it's not entirely perfect here either. And that's fine. Unfortunately, we don't have tools like, um, you know, blending modes for the brush here. In Photoshop, we might use like an overlay blending mode to fine tune this, but we don't have that here. So, you know, it's not as full featured, but certainly featured enough for what we need in this particular case. So we're gonna hit option M again, just to get us back to the regular view. And what I wanna do now is uh, create a new layer and we're gonna call that background. So I'll just call this BG for short. And then we're gonna go into our drop down here and copy mask from subject. So now we've got a mask that is the same as the other mask, but what we wanna do is invert it. So we're gonna go back into our tools and invert mask. So now you see we have the mask that is the opposite of that previous selection. So once again, we're going to hit the M key just to get rid of that and increase the exposure on the background a little bit just to make it slightly brighter. So something like that. Now what we want to do is um, balance out the face with the rest of the body. So once again, I'm going to create a new layer here. And we're going to call this face. And selecting our brush here, I'm just going to shrink down the size again and make sure that the mask is enabled. So I'm going to hit the M key. And we're just going to paint in the face itself, kind of encroaching into the hairline a little bit is actually a good thing here because we want the refine tools to uh, sort of fine tune that selection so that it is nice and accurate and fine. And it will actually kind of feather everything around here perfectly. So it's, it works really nicely for this kind of thing. And then we're going to go into our drop down once again, fill mask, and we're going to select refine mask yet again. So we have our selection now and that looks pretty good. I think we could fine tune the size a little bit, but I don't think it's really necessary because the selection does look good. So um, once again, we're gonna click apply there. We've got our mask ready. So we're gonna hit the M key once again to hide the mask. And we're just gonna turn the exposure down on the face just to match it up with the rest of the body. So that's gonna be somewhere um, around here, I think is pretty good. I do want it slightly lighter than the body because it is after all closer to the light source than the body. So naturally it should be a little bit brighter. We could keep going on this if you wanted it perfectly balanced out. But for me, this looks pretty good. We can always come back to it and fine tune it later as well once we do our final adjustment. So let's go ahead and do our last adjustment here, which is going to be our highlights. So we'll call this highlights. And for this, we once again need to copy a mask because um, we're gonna use the Luma Range tool. And what you need to know about the Luma Range tool is it's a little unintuitive at first because um, if you start with an empty layer, it actually won't do anything. So you need to have something painted in. So if you wanted to have the whole image selected, you would go into here and you would say fill mask and that will create a mask that is um, filling the entire layer. And then from here, we can actually start using the Luma Range tools. In our case, we don't need to do that. We can actually isolate things to the subject because we already have a subject mask. So we're gonna go into the highlights here with the highlights layer selected. We're gonna go and we're gonna copy mask from once again, subject. So we've got our mask there. And now when we apply the Luma Range filter, it will only apply it to the masked area. So let's select Luma Range. Once again, this is going to take a minute to think. And now that that's ready, we can start adjusting our Luma range here. So let's just drag this over so we can see our entire image. And basically the way this works is, of course, these are your shadows, these are your highlights. And as we move things along here, we're going to start removing a certain luminosity range. So we're ultimately concerned with the highlights. I want to grab the highlights just to make them pop a little bit more. So somewhere in around here. And you'll notice, of course, that some highlights are not encapsulated within the selection. So for example, right here on the nose, it's not actually included in the selection. So what we need to do with that is actually slide this slider over to the very edge if we want all highlights included. 
the reason for that is that because we have this sort of fall off or feather uh, along the edge and what this basically does is it just makes the transition less sharp it includes some of uh, the actual luminosity range within you know our cutoff point here and this cutoff point by sort of feathering along that luminosity range so if we kind of pull this right into here you'll see that that is much sharper and more abrupt whereas if I pull this out it's a lot smoother and more pleasing so we're gonna pull this in and I'm probably gonna pull it in almost all the way I just don't want to include the very very brightest highlights so somewhere in and around probably 250 here is going to be good the reason I don't want to select the brightest of the bright highlights is that we're going to be increasing the highlights, so I don't want to increase them even more. So I think this is pretty good. Now what we can do is refine this a little bit more using these radius and sensitivity sliders. So these ones here kind of work in tandem, and it may be a little bit confusing at first because you may think that the radius here is the same as the radius in the refine mask, and it sort of is but also isn't. If we turn sensitivity down and we crank up the radius, you'll see what happens here it's actually going to blur the whole selection out. So this radius is almost like a feather in this particular case, whereas radius in the refine mask tool is actually the radius for the refine operation. Now in this case, that refine mask is sort of built into this as a combination of these two sliders. So basically if we select something like this, maybe as a reasonable radius, let's say 100, now we can use the sensitivity to refine that blur to something that is a little bit more um, sort of real in terms of the pixels that are around it. So the more we increase the sensitivity, that's sort of the refine mask operation operating on top of the feather that's introduced in the radius. So it's a little bit confusing at first, but I think once you sort of play with it, it begins to make sense. Now, in this case, I think the radius is still too high. I think it's just including too much stuff. So let's just knock that down a little bit. And then maybe let's pull this in just a little bit more. Okay, and keep in mind too that you can hold down um, shift and option keys and use this. It kind of affects how uh, these elements slide around. So just play around with the shift and option key and pull uh, these individual tabs and you'll kind of see what they do. Uh, you can move the whole thing around just by grabbing right here in the middle. So I'm pretty happy with that selection. I'm gonna click apply there. I'm gonna hit the M key. And then now what I'm gonna do is just boost the exposure a little bit on that just to give it a little bit more pop, maybe a 10th of a stop or something like that. And then I'm just gonna rein in the very, very bright highlights back by just pulling on the highlight recovery slider. So maybe just a five so that we're not clipping too many of the, the brightest highlights here. So that I think is okay. Let's just toggle that on and off. That's just giving us a little bit more pop in the highlights. And now I think the face does feel a little too bright still. So I'm going to actually take that down even more. So let's just go to here. And overall, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, of course, if we had to do something like uh, you know, matching colors or whatever, we can do that as well because we've got selections of the face. So I could adjust the face color, body color, but in this case, they are matched up pretty nicely. And overall, I think I'm pretty happy with where this image is at now. So this is pretty much ready to go into Photoshop for the rest of the retouch. So let's move on to our next example, which we have down here. And effectively what I wanna do is recover a little bit of the shadow side here. And the reason for that is because this was an image shot with natural light using a wide angle lens. And so the image was lacking a little bit of contrast initially. And essentially, you know, it looks something like this after I make my set of adjustments to give it more contrast. So if we take off these levels adjustments here, we pull that back, you can see that it just lacks a little bit of punch and contrast. So to bring it back in, I've really pulled in sort of the highlights and I've pulled in uh, the black point just to give it some more depth. So now that I've done that though, I've really kind of clipped a lot of these deeper shadows that we have here and I wanna bring some of that back. So this is again, just a perfect scenario for when we can use the luminosity mask to actually rein in those shadows while still keeping the essence of what I wanted to achieve with this levels adjustment, which was to give more depth to the image initially. So once again, we're gonna go into here and we'll just call this shadows or we can call it blacks because that's really what we're targeting. We're not so much targeting shadows, we're actually targeting the blacks. And um, and I want to and the reason I'm doing this instead of using something like the shadow recovery tool because once again if we go into here, I've recovered a little bit of the shadows and I can actually probably reduce this now because uh, this is actually an image I started working on in Capture One version 11 where I didn't have some of these Luma range tools, and so with them I get a lot more control. But it, as you can see, if I start to kind of nudge this here, it once again flattens out other parts of the image that I don't want affected. Like you can actually look at the subject and you know certain other parts are are getting flattened out and we're losing using, once again, that effect that I had here uh, using these adjustments within the levels. So I don't really want to do that. That's why I want to really refine that using 
our luma range. So going back into our shadows layer here, I'm gonna go ahead and select luma range. Now, this is where, once again, see, I, I need to caution you um, why this is a little bit confusing at times is because if I display mask now, and I try and do anything, you'll see that it doesn't actually do anything. And this is something that's tripping me up, as you can see even now. And I won't cut this out of the video because I want, to, want you to see that it's, it is okay if it trips you up too. Um, it doesn't affect anything. And so once this finishes churning, once again, with a faster computer, this will be much, much better. But once this finishes spinning, there we go. We're gonna make some adjustments here and nothing is happening even though we have display mask on. The reason for that is because we did not fill our layer. So let's hit cancel there. And we're basically working with an empty layer. If I hit M, nothing happens. There's there's nothing there. So what we need to do is we need to go up here and select fill mask. And now we're gonna affect the entire image. And that's fine for our purposes because I, I don't need to actually extract my subject here because we're selecting shadows. Obviously there's no shadows in uh, the background. So it's totally fine in this particular scenario. Start off with a fill layer and we're good to go. Now we're gonna go back again and actually click on Luma range. And now when we try and do this, it will actually do something. So let's go ahead and display mask. The one nice thing that you can see is I didn't have to wait for it to process again. It kind of keeps that information in the cache. Uh, and so, you know, this is the second time you launch this, it is quite quick. So right now, obviously we're selecting everything except for the deepest shadows and the deepest and the brightest highlights. So that's not what we want. We're gonna drag it over to this side now. So we really wanna isolate those shadows. That's probably still too much. I really just want to hit on those really, really dark ones, something like that. And once again, we have to pull this all the way back because I want to make sure that I include those really dark ones and just refining some more until only the area that I really want is affected. I think that's pretty good. So now we're going to crank up our radius once again and just see if this helps us in this case. And I think it does. It's just going to create a slightly smoother selection. So we're going to play with these values until we see something that we're pretty happy with. I think that's pretty good. I'm actually maybe just gonna rein this in a little bit more. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. So let's go ahead and click apply there. And now we can go ahead and recover some of those shadows. So we're gonna pull this slider back until we're pretty happy. So somewhere around there is good. Now I've retained a lot of the depth that I wanted within the image, but if we toggle this on and off, we can see that I have that detail. Now in this case, probably went a little too far with this slider. So once again, I can just tone it back. Always good to toggle your layers on and off just to make sure that what you're doing makes sense. And that's great. I think this is gonna serve as a really nice starting point for the rest of the retouch. Um, whereas before, if we look at this, I don't really have any shadow information to work off of in Photoshop. I may choose at the end to, you know, push the blacks a little bit more, but at least I've got some sort of information within there to actually work off of. So that's all we're going to cover in that particular image. And we're going to move on to the next one where we use um, luminosity masks in a more sort of common scenario, let's say. Okay, so the last image we're going to work on is this one here. And if we look at the version of this image without any layers adjustments. We're gonna hold down the Option key and Alt, or Alt key, and then we're gonna click on this little sort of back arrow. So if you ever wanted to kind of toggle all layers, that's how you do it, Option or Alt key, and click down on the arrow, and that will sort of, you know, turn them all off for you. So that's what it looks like. This is what it looks like after, and it's actually really easy to do this now, thanks to the luminosity masking tools to actually pull a little bit of detail uh, in from that background. So that is what we're gonna do now, so let's go ahead and go into this image here. And let's go ahead and turn off this sky layer. Let's just get rid of it entirely and go ahead and create it ourselves. So for that, we're gonna use a combination of uh, two tools here. So the first thing we'll do is just create that layer called sky. And the next thing we're gonna do is grab, whoops, let's just zoom that back out. And we're gonna grab the linear gradient tool. So you can hit the G key as well if that is easier for you. And then we're just gonna pull down and let's just see where we're at. So this is making a selection of the top and then kind of feathering it towards here. Uh, you can hold down the shift key as well for this if you ever want to constrain um, to you know a 45 degree angle or to horizontal or vertical, shift key will allow you to do that. Option key allows you to control a single one of these individually. If you don't hold down option, it will stretch them both. So if you wanna kind of refine 
how that feathering happens. You can do that that way. In my case, I do want to rotate this a little bit just to match the angle within the horizon line there. And then we'll just kind of push this up. So something like this is what we want to work with. So once again, just kind of experiment with the shift and option slash alt key uh, when you're creating these uh, gradient masks, they do kind of you know, make the actual masking tools operate in a different way. So just play around with those. So there's our initial mask and that's what we're gonna use to work off of um, when we're building our Luma range. So like I said before, you have to have some sort of selection. And in this case, because it's in the sky, I don't wanna bother with anything down here. So linear gradient is a good starting point. We're gonna hit M key to get out of that. And then we're gonna go into our Luma range. So once again, it's going to do a little bit of thinking So now that that's ready, let's go ahead and turn on display mask so that we actually see what is being selected. And obviously our selection right now is wrong. It's not what we want. It's selecting everything except for the sky. Uh, certainly the opposite effect that we're looking for. So let's go ahead and first of all, pull this to here. Once again, you can see we're still not getting the effect we want. And that's once again, because of this fall off and feather that we have. So pulling that all the way this way. And now we're kind of getting somewhere where we want. So it's some of this fabric is being encroached on and that's okay. We can either choose to remove it later using our eraser or we can decide that we wanna leave it. But in any case, one thing I do wanna do is do a little bit more of this radius and sensitivity adjustment just to kind of refine that selection a bit. So let's try this here, something along those lines. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Let's just see if we want to maybe nudge this just a little bit more. Yeah, I think that looks better. Still getting all of our sky in, but not making as much of a selection on the subject. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply that. So there's our selection of the sky. Once again, we can hit the M key to see that, or we can hit option M and we can see where we really got that selection and that's great. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, if I wanted to erase this, I can hit uh, the E key for the eraser and I can try and paint here. Now, once again, it's going to remind me, do you want to rasterize this mask? And basically it's saying that you can't go in anymore and adjust the Luma range. Like right now, if we go back in, I can go to Luma range and I can make further adjustments to this if I want to. Once I rasterize it, I can no longer get back into here um, because it just becomes a simple painted mask at that point. So I personally am not going to bother removing this because it's just not going to cause any problems for what we want to do. In fact, it's probably quite bright, so there's a good chance we actually do want to recover some of that area anyways. So Option M or Alt M is going to get us back, and now we're going to make some uh, recovery within that sky. So let's go ahead and pull our highlights to bring some of that back. There we go. I didn't want a ton of detail, like I don't want it, you know, too in depth there. Like if, if I kind of scale this back, you know, this is where we started. We have no detail in the sky. If I pull it all the way to max, it's probably a little more than I need. So somewhere in around here is just going to give us some color in the background. And I think that's perfect. So probably around 50 is where I would leave that. And we can even experiment with something like color balance. We can go into highlights and maybe we want to add a little bit more yellow into the background. You can certainly do that. Now that we have that selection, you know, sort of we can play around with it however we like. Uh, we can decide that maybe we want a little more blue. I don't know how that's going to look, but let's try it. We can cool it off. Yeah, not a huge fan of that, but like I said, you can mess around with it and um, play around to your heart's content. So let's go ahead and close that and go back into our high dynamic range. So overall, I think that's all I really want to do with the background. Now I want to maybe um, work with my subject a little bit. So I'm going to create a new layer here and we're going to call this subject. And once again, we're going to copy mask from sky and we're going to invert the mask. So there is, ah, see, this is where we made a mistake. So in this case, it's retaining the Luma range and trying to apply it to an inverted version of the gradient mask. So that's not what we want. So in this case, if we wanna do this, uh, we're gonna have to be a little bit more creative. So let's go ahead and go back. And so this is our mask here. So what I'm actually gonna do now that I've copied it, I'm not gonna invert it just yet. I'm going to leave it as is, and then we're gonna rasterize the mask. Now it's a pixelated mask. Now, if I invert the mask, it's doing what we want. It's making a selection of the subject. So before it was happening, I was copying it. And when I was inverting, I was inverting that 
um, linear gradient that we made. And so we were inverting that and then luminosity masking was trying to find the highlights within the bottom portion of the image. And that's not what we want in this case. So that's why we had to rasterize first uh, and then do an invert. So like I said, you know, these are the kind of things that you really need to uh, figure out with the masking that can get um, a little bit tricky, a little bit nuanced, but um, they all make sense as you kind of work through this process. So now that we've got a selection of everything else, let's go ahead and get rid of our uh, mask from showing there. And let's say we want to uh, make the subject pop a little bit more by boosting some of the highlights within the subject, something like that. Maybe increase the exposure on the subject a little bit just to balance it out with the background. And maybe we can give our shadows a little bit more depth here. Let's put that something like that. And then maybe recover a little bit of shadow still at the same time. And so now the last thing I want to show you is just how to use the radial gradient tool. And for that, we're just going to use it to create a simple vignette. So not something that I do too often, but uh, may as well just show off how that tool works. So we're going to create a layer called vignette. And we're going to go into our tool selector here, and we're just going to select radial gradient. You can also hit the T key to bring that up. And we're going to click down somewhere in the middle here, and we're just going to drag out a radial gradient. Uh, you can hold down the shift key just to... Um, constrain that to a circle if you ever want. In this case, we want more of an oval shape. Now, once that is created, we can, of course, move it around by dragging the center point. If we hit the M key, we will see the mask. One thing to note is the mask is actually applied to the outside of where the radial um, circle is. So whatever you're seeing, you might think initially that it's actually on the inside, but it's not. It's uh, creating the opposite. It's actually doing the mask on the outside around um, your circular point. So if you want the opposite, of course, you can just hit, um, once you actually create this, then you can invert the mask after the fact, like we've used uh, within the other images here. And you can grab the middle uh, portion of the circle here and then rotate it if you need to. You can also drag the points around afterwards if you'd like. If you hold down the shift key, it will drag both the inner circle and outer circle in at the same time. So if you wanna reduce the feather overall, you can do it that way. And then we can kind of scale this up. So however we want to make this vignette here, something like that, maybe nudge it up so we don't get so much of the face in there. And then we just hit the M key once again to hide it. And we can just drag down the exposure slider to create the vignette that we want. So, I mean, obviously in this particular image, I probably would not create a vignette, but um, it's more of a finishing technique anyways, but it's a good way to show off how that tool works and, you know, sort of allowing you to create a vignette with a little bit more control than you normally might have using the sort of the standard uh, vignetting tools. So that is that. And um, overall, we now have an image that is much more ready to go into Photoshop to finalize the rest of the retouch. You can, of course, finish your retouch here within Capture One, um, because as I've shown in the past, you can actually do dodging and burning using layers and masks, just as you would in Photoshop. So either way, uh, this is kind of a good base for the rest of my retouch now, um, and all done using uh, you know, layers and in particular the Luma range here, which allowed us to make this selection really quickly, really easily uh, in a very common scenario. So I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, we've covered off pretty much all the tools I think that we have within here. The only thing we didn't maybe cover is something like the feather mask that basically allows you to blur your mask after the fact. So if you use too much hardness within your pen and you want to soften it, you can use the feather mask tool to do that. Um, we've used tools like uh, fill invert uh, clear mask I haven't that just basically wipes out the entire mask so that's really all um, the tools that you're going to be using on a regular basis and like I said earlier it's really something that you have to play with just to figure out some of those nuances especially when we look at the differences between rasterized and non rasterized masks so just something that you need to get used to but those tools are really really powerful. So uh, if you like this video, make sure that you give me a thumbs up for it and uh, make sure that you subscribe to this channel as well for future updates. Like I said, we will be talking about Capture 112 in depth uh, in future videos. So to make sure you don't miss that, just hit the subscribe button there. So we'll see you next time. Bye for now.